So what is a home lab? Why do you need one? For learning more about tech, for building your own testing center, whatever it may be. What is a home lab? Well, let's just define these two terms very quickly. Well, home, it's in your home. Now it doesn't have to be in your home. It could be in an office and you just call it an office lab. So what is a lab? Well, think about a lab such as a scientific lab. This is a place where they're going and testing things. There's an environment where they can go and build things, try things, demo things make sure that things are working correctly, make sure that things are not breaking. That is exactly what you're gonna be doing in this lab environment. So this lab environment is a testing ground for you to get better in whatever you want to be learning or getting better at in technology. Maybe you wanna let me know in the comments below, why do you wanna know more about a home lab? Do you wanna go and build yourself one? Do you want to learn more about tech? Are you already working in tech? And also, hey, I release videos every single week on a lot of things, on all things tech. So do remember to click on that subscription button and on the bell so that you don't miss out on anything. What I found is when I was starting off in technology, I mean, I've been in technology for now over 20 years. And when I started off, I knew this much about technology. And when I started working in a company, I found that great, I'm gonna get exposed to a lot of this awesome tech in a company, but at the same time, I'm not able to play with certain things. So for example, I started off as a help desk person, somebody starting off in help desk and just doing some basic troubleshooting, fixing computers, helping staff out in the company, but I wasn't allowed to touch the servers. I wasn't allowed to touch the switches and all the networking equipment. I wasn't able to go into a data center and play around with all of the fancy tech in there because I was not advanced enough. So if I'm not able to go and actually play with the servers and play with the networking, how am I supposed to learn about all of that technology if the company won't give me that opportunity? The home lab is where you fix that problem. You can actually learn a lot of the tech that is needed for then you to be able to go to a company or go to your boss or go to your manager and say, hey, look, um, I would like to get exposure and start playing around with this server technology. And here is what I've been doing at home in my lab environment and see, I can build all of this sort of stuff. I understand the terminology. And then your boss, somebody in a company, may be giving you more responsibility because they now can see that you have that experience. Even if it is in a home lab, you've now got that experience to be able to do that in a real network. And it's very common that you're gonna be in a company that is not gonna let you play with certain things, especially production equipment, because that could have a massive, massive impact to that company. So for example, imagine you've got yourself your domain controller. Now the, the domain controller is this big piece of equipment that is managing a domain. Well, you don't wanna go and start playing around with that and start learning about that domain controller in a production environment. You don't wanna be going and playing around with a core switch and you accidentally change the port configuration or mess something up, the impact could be really, really bad. So the lab environment is a place where you can test your learning, test all this equipment. So home lab really is just a network. It's just a network made up of different networking components, but it's generally gonna be a little bit smaller than a real life network. Okay, if you're thinking about a company, a company is gonna have a lot of equipment. They may have a data center, they may have some server rooms, some comms room, racked with a whole bunch of equipment. Firewalls, switches and routers, server equipment, their storage equipment, and that stuff is gonna cost thousands, hundreds of thousands of dollars to set up and get working for that company. And look, you may be able to set up something like that at home if you're a bajillionaire, but for the average person, you won't be able to go and spend hundreds of thousands of dollars to have all that equipment at home. Well, in a home lab, you can actually mimic the things that are in a real life network. You will still be able to build some servers, for example, but they're not gonna need to be a full rack server that you've spent $20,000 on. You could have something like this. I've just got myself a Mac Mini. A Mac Mini that I can set up with some virtualization server software and actually go and build some virtual machines right onto it. I could have an old laptop. Inside of it is a hard drive, some RAM, some CPU, all that you need to go and start building some server software directly onto it. I could go and load Linux onto this. I could go run Windows Server onto this. I could make this into a domain controller and that becomes part of my home lab. How do you hook it up all together? Well, here is a standard switch an eight port switch, I'm running all my devices into that and then I can connect it all together. I love it when I have a candidate, when I have somebody who's coming in for an interview who has their own home lab because it shows me that that person 
is willing to learn. So you need to have your own home lab. Now you don't have to go and spend a whole bunch of money to get started. You may not even have to spend any money if you've already got equipment laying around. So if you've got old computers, if your friends and family have got old computers, old switches, old home routers, get them. You can use all of that to build a home lab. If you've got your own equipment, that's great. If you need to go and buy some secondhand stuff, maybe go off to eBay and look for some old equipment, that is great. But if you've got an old PC, an old desktop PC, that is, you know, it's running a little bit slow, why don't you go and buy some more RAM for it? Maybe upgrade the CPU, get it running a little bit better. And that is the beauty of a home lab, is you can customize it with the stuff that you've already got. But remember, if you wanna learn a specific technology, if you wanna go down the networking route, then build your home lab with the networking components in mind. If you wanna learn more about VMware, then go and build your lab to have hardware that can be capable of running VMware's ESXi, go and build virtual servers, all of that. If you just wanna learn a little bit about everything, then that's great, you can build your lab towards that. I do have another short video that you can check out around a home lab that I have built, but if you want to learn a lot more about a home lab, we've got a full length training course from start to finish, building, configuring, setting up, troubleshooting, your own home lab. So go and check that out, I've got that in the show notes right below. And also do remember to click on the subscription button on the bell, I release videos every week on all things tech. So if you click on that, really would appreciate it. And you'll also keep up to date with everything that I've got coming out. But that's it. Thanks so much for spending the time. Really appreciate it. We'll talk to you next time.